Before we get into today's video, I do want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all had a wonderful week. I hope everybody is doing good and feeling great. You guys, we are in November. Weird, weird that we're in November of 2023. We're about to be in December like, oh my goodness. But this is the most wonderful time of the year. So I hope everybody is doing well. Now, before we get all the way into today's video, I wanna set the tone because I feel like this could be almost anybody that I know in this situation. One of my single friends, I have so many of my, my girlfriends that are middle-aged and that are single and haven't given up on love and you, you know what I mean? So I just want y'all to think about this. For those of y'all that are single out there, for those of y'all that remember being single, you know, maybe you end up getting married, you have a child that y'all love very much, and for whatever reason, the marriage does not work out. You end up parting ways, you're in your career, you're prime, and you're ready to give love a try again. The next thing you know, you meet somebody that seems to tick all of the boxes. Handsome, good looking, charming, affectionate, hardworking, Dad maybe just left him four to six million dollars so he's not hurting for money, willing to move, travel. I mean, and you really feel like this is what I've been waiting for. Everything seems perfect until it's not. Today's video, that's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about the case of Shanti Trones. Before we get into it though, I did wanna let you guys know if you don't already know, hi, my name is Christina. I do have a second channel, which is Casually Christina. We do things way more casually over there. I also have a Patreon. My Patreon is for 18 and up, and over there we talk about more personal story times. We go live over there, and I also have a $2 tier over there where all of the true crime stuff that cannot go onto YouTube due to their terms and policies, that goes over on my Patreon. Make sure you read what the tiers offer before you join. And I also have a Snapchat, an Instagram, and a Facebook, and those are all linked down in the description box if you'd like to come and check me out. So let's just start at the beginning. 55-year-old David Trones and 39-year-old Shanti Cooper Trones met on a dating website back in 2013. David was living in Minneapolis, Minnesota. He had actually just parted ways with his wife that he had been with for years, just a few months prior, when he met Shanti on this website, and it didn't take much convincing for him to pack up, take everything, and move down to Orlando, Florida to be with Shanti. Friends describe Shanti as very hardworking and a dedicated mother to her son. She shared, at the time, an eight-year-old son between her and her ex-husband, Jim Cooper. Not only was Shanti hardworking, but she was very successful. She had actually launched a successful financial software business and worked from a home office. So right now, Shanti feel like she's got it going on, okay? She's got her successful business at home. She's got her handsome, good-looking man that packed up, left everything from Minnesota to move down to Florida to be with her. It didn't hurt that he told her that when his father passed away, he had left David four to six million dollars. So he had a huge inheritance from his father and he had a lot of free time to spend doing whatever he wanted because he was a millionaire. Well, in 2015, David went and purchased a 4,000 square foot fixer upper gargoyle style home in the Delaney Park neighborhood in Orlando, Florida. It had a pool and a garage apartment. Now get this, David went and paid cash for this house, $600,000, just boom. And Shanti believed that this was going to be everything that they ever wanted. However, the house ended up being way more trouble than it was worth. It was a money pit. Every time they tore down a wall to fix something, there was five more things that they needed to fix. And before you know it, Shanti herself had put a quarter of a million dollars into this home, fixing it up, and it seemed like they weren't getting 
anywhere. Because of this, there was a lot of stress on the relationship between Shanti and David, which makes sense. But not only did things start to become rocky between the two of them because of the house and all of the issues that was coming from it, Shanti would later find out that even though she was putting all of this money into this home, David had actually left her off of the deed. So at this time, they weren't even married. Now they would go on to get married in 2017, but when he bought the house in 2015 and they started working on it and she's working and she's putting money into the house, she had no rights to the house at all. As a matter of fact, Shanti and people around David started to wonder if he actually ever even inherited all these a million dollars from his dad in the first place. David would do really weird things and his friends would say that when they were with him, he would be penny pinching and like totaling up every little thing. Like if they went to lunch, he was calculating, oh, I don't wanna spend that much, da, 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 da. Allegedly from David's friends, he didn't carry himself or seem like the type of person that had millions of dollars in the bank if he needs to remove, you know, the cheese from the burger because of that extra 39 cents, basically. So people were getting suspicious like, did he lie about that? It is even said that when Shanti and David were still renting before he bought this gargoyle style fixer upper over half of a million dollar home for them to work on and for her to pour all of her money in, they were renting a place together. At this time, David said that he would only pay a third of the rent because she had her and her son there that she shared custody with. So therefore she should have to pay two thirds of the rent and him pay one third of the rent. I'm sorry, that right there, I'd have been like, I don't think so. Like, are you kidding me? So, but anyways, that's how like cheap he was penny pinching with this woman that he would later marry that he said he loved. And it was also said that David refused to pay for groceries. Like he just wouldn't contribute to anything. By April of 2018, David and Shanti were still renovating that $600,000 home, which they referred to as a money pit because it was completely in shambles. The main part of the house was unlivable and it was so bad, Shanti was working and sleeping above the garage in a small garage apartment and David was sleeping downstairs with the dogs. The house was more than just a project for David though. He had become completely obsessed with it and it had just taken over his life. They were even in talks with producers to appear on a show called Zombie House Flipping. The show, which is on A&E Network, is a home renovation show that features old abandoned or zombie houses that get renovated to high value homes. David thought going on the show would increase the value of the house, but Shanti didn't agree. She apparently even walked out of a meeting with producers right before filming was supposed to begin. At this point, Shanti was pretty much completely fed up with the whole entire situation. She had put in $250,000 of her own money. This man is only asking previously to pay for a third of the rent because he's calculating her son. He's not helping with groceries. They're sleeping in totally different rooms. She finds out that she's not on the deed of the house. And then she finds out not only is she not on the deed of the house that she's working to pay to fix up, but that he deeded the house to his mother. So if something ever happened to him, the house would actually go to his mother and not to her. But all of this tension would come to a screeching halt on April 24th of 2018. On April 24th of 2018, David said that at 3.50 p.m. he walked into the bathroom and found his wife Shanti floating in the bathtub dead. When David called 911, he claimed that she slipped and fell while trying to get into the bathtub. Stop breathing. I'm trying to do CPR. I can't Okay, get listen to me. I need Are help. You, can you tell me what your address is? Now, can I just throw this in here? When I heard found floating dead in the bathtub. I wanted to see this bathtub. I thought it was like a big garden tub. You know how they are. Some of y'all got big old giant garden tubs like that you can swim in, okay? When I saw this bathtub floating, <sighs> nevertheless, first responders rushed to the home to help. When they rushed to the home, this is when they started seeing some weird stuff that they were not expecting to see. They saw that she had bruises all over her. 
not just slip and fall bruises, but like she had been injured by something or someone. They even saw bruises on her neck, wounds on her face, and scrapes on her legs. She was also completely dry when they found her, and so was the bathtub. At this point, David was a suspect, and investigators asked him if he'd be willing to voluntarily follow them back to the station. He agreed, and he was questioned for 14 hours without a lawyer. During this questioning, David told the investigators that he took the dogs to to a dog park to take them for a walk. When he came back, this is when he found Shanti in her PJs where she had slipped and fell, and he said that he tried to perform CPR on her, but it didn't work. Because you heard the water and didn't hear her, you felt something was wrong? I went upstairs, I don't hear her talking on the phone, so I say hello, I don't hear anything then. I can hear water running. Um, she's not saying anything doesn't seem right sometimes it is hard if you have the water running to hear somebody out there so that that was my assumption okay so you it's one room you don't see her Until is, that what you're the bathroom. Okay. is the bathroom door open or closed open open okay and so you walk toward the water that you're hearing yeah, I walk into the bathroom. Okay. The door's open, and what happens? What do you see? I see her laying with her head in the right-hand corner. Um, the water is running, but I don't think I don't think the drain is closed because it, if it was, it would be it would be going over right. So the water's like half full. She's submerged partially, but she's also partially not submerged. And one of her legs is kind of sticking up and out a little bit. And it's just extremely awful. And it doesn't look natural. Obviously, she fell or something happened. And I, um, I tried to pick her up. I turned the water off. I tried to pick her up. Um, she's, she's stiff. After the interrogation, the investigators did not have any choice but to let him go. Now, Later on, a couple of the investigators would say that they immediately was suspicious of him, which we all know you always look at the people that are closest to the victim. Anyways, one of the investigators said that they had their eye on him, but they were also questioning the ex-husband. Like, okay, where was he at? Da, 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 da. But the more that they listened to David and they looked at the crime scene, which mind you, they realized that Shanti's body had already been in rigor mortis when they got there because she was already starting to become stiff, suggested to the investigators that she didn't just slip and fall while he was at the dog park, that something had happened and she had been there for a while. However, the investigators did not have enough to arrest David, so they had to let him go. Now, when Shanti's body was sent off to the medical examiner, this is where they found her cause of death. The medical examiner ruled her cause of death as strangulation and blunt force trauma to the head, not drowning, not slip and fall floating in a bathtub. When investigators went back to David to let him know and then to question him further, because at this point, he's become their number one suspect. This is when David told them like, oh my goodness, it was probably a robbery. $5,000 was missing from our home and Shanti's engagement ring, which he told them was valued at $15,000. So now he's telling the investigators that, oh my gosh, she was robbed. These things were missing. She was murdered. The investigators continued to search and search and search. I mean, they had their eye on David, but they did not have enough to arrest him for murder and then to convict him for murder. So while investigators were searching for clues, a very big clue seemed to just fall in their lap. And you guys, this one, when I heard about this, I was like, whoa. A worker from Club Orlando called in and said that they knew David because he went to the club all the time. Now this Club Orlando is a same bathhouse, okay? And this worker called and said that David had a membership there. 
and that he would come there all the time. And the more that the investigators looked into this, it seemed like David had actually visited this bathhouse like 70 something times since he was with Shanti. So since he moved down to Orlando, was married to her and everything, he was sneaking off to this bathhouse and getting bathed by other men. And this person that called in said that he knew for sure that David was intimate with at least two different men while he was there at the bathhouse. This is what gave the investigators a motive. They started to wonder if maybe Shanti had found out about this and realized that David was living a whole double life at nighttime. They think that she could have threatened to stop funding the house project and that could have thrown David into a complete rage. Four months after Shanti's death, on August 29th of 2018, David was arrested for her murder. In a shocking turn of events, when David was arrested, the cops ended up searching his mother's house because that's where he was living at at this point. So now he's living with his mama who he done deeded this trash house to. They searched everything after they arrested him. Guess what they found? They found that $15,000 engagement ring that he had told the investigators was stolen when somebody mysteriously came in and strangled her and beat her in the head and killed her. He had the ring. Then investigators received yet another tip that took them by surprise. This tip led them to Minnesota back in time when David was married to a woman named Carol. Former close friends of Carol told the detectives that they believed that David may have been poisoning his ex-wife. Allegedly, as soon as David and Carol got married, Carol started having a bunch of unknown health issues that just came out of nowhere. Because of this, investigators wondered if Shanti had any kind of health issues that may have been similar. And lo and behold, when detectives looked into Shanti's medical history, Eight weeks before she was killed, she had to have an emergency removal of her appendix just out of nowhere. The hospital said that she had appendicitis, but investigators say that appendicitis and poisoning can have very similar symptoms. David even told investigators that Shanti had been having digestion problems all the way up to the day that she died. And in yet another shocking turn of events, investigators got a random phone call from one of David's defense attorneys saying he had bloody sheets from the garage apartment where Shanti was found dead, but he had never turned them over to the prosecution. The detective said that at that point he told David's defense attorney if you have anything else any other little bit of evidence you got a little bloody something over here you got this you're hiding you got the engagement ring anything else you better turn it over right now and about 10 to 12 hours later the attorney called the detective back and said that he had another item that he needed to turn over it was a green cord the defense attorney told the investigator that a pi removed it from david's house because david had been threatening to end his own life but the investigator said that it didn't make sense at the time and wondered why they would feel inclined to turn that over. But then he remembered that Shanti's cause of death was strangulation. And once the investigators had this green cord, they had it tested for DNA evidence. And guess what? Zero DNA was found on this cord, which wasn't super surprising because they figured by this time he had already cleaned it, but you would think that it would have DNA on it, right? Like I'm sure everything just about in this house has my DNA on it. I mean, the bricks, the door handles, there's DNA on it. You're coughing, you're spitting, you're sneezing. <laughs> that sounds so gross, but you know what I mean, right? Our DNA is all over this house, but for there to be something in the home that I pass over to somebody and it have zero DNA evidence on it, not a fingerprint, not a nothing, suspicious. After this, the defense attorney ended up excusing themselves from counsel from defending David, and they actually went under investigation for tampering with evidence themselves. Now, initially, when David went in, he was ruled incompetent to stand trial, which I, I, I want to know, can I sit in this room? Because the man was competent enough to go and buy this house and to go to the bathhouse and to you know, get married and get divorced and do all these things and put the deed in his mama's name. He was competent to do all these other things, but he ain't, okay, let's keep going. He was diagnosed with schizophrenia, okay? 
He went through a bunch of stuff. And in 2022, the judge said that he was competent to stand trial. And during the five day trial, the defense claimed that David had nothing to do with Shanti's murder and stated that they still thought that she may have been home when the house was burglarized. But the prosecution made it clear that there were no signs of forced entry, no signs of a struggle, and there were thousands of dollars of values left in the home in plain sight. The prosecution believed that Shanti was actually attacked by David the night before he called 911. Oh yeah, they think that he attacked her that night. A lot of people think that she found out about the bathhouse situation, confronted him, was gonna leave him, was gonna remove all of her money that she was now investing into this home and taking care of him at this point and that he flipped out on her in this rage and ended up doing this. Well, they believe that the next day he was out running errands, living his life normally, until he came back and then later that evening ended up calling 911. They even found one of Shanti's earrings sitting on her bedside table and the other one was still in her ear. And they realized that her cell phone had not been used or moved since the night before at 11 p.m. from, you know, remember he called 911 and reported that he had found her at like 3.50, almost 4 p.m. the following day. The jury deliberated for five hours before they came back with a guilty verdict for murder for David. And witness impact statements were allowed to be given. And you guys, her son, oh my gosh, her son got up there so brave, such a brave little boy. I'm gonna play that for you guys now, but yeah. Your Honor, my mom was the best person I ever knew. worked a lot, but she never put her family over work. Jackson, <laughs> take your time. Early 2018, she was taken from me and my family. It's like a hole in my heart that I can't fill or fix. She didn't die peacefully. She did not deserve anything that happened to her that night. My family and I have been waiting for about five years for justice. I miss her so much. I would have never thought the day before it was the last time I would see my mother alive. I miss the times where we would go to Universal or just the simple times like walking the dogs or going to the park. She was the best mom I could ever ask for. That's it. Unbelievably heartbreaking. That's just not a side that we, we see a lot of like the little children getting up there. And a lot of us have, have kids Shanti's son's age and he was so brave to get up there and give that impact statement like that. Immediately after that, David was sentenced to life in prison. What do I think? I think he was a scammer. I still think he's a scammer. I think all of it was a scam. I don't even know if the schizophrenia is fully real. Now I do wanna say that I'm sure they have got a lot of professionals there but I, but I know he's a scammer. That's all I know. And I can't, I can't go against what the doctors are saying, but he's, he's a scammer. That's what I think. I think he was planning on fixing it all up with her money. The deed was in his name. He just split up with her then, sold it and made more money. And I'm glad that David got life in prison. Unfortunately, it's not going to bring this little boy's mommy back. And I feel for her. And again, like I said to you guys in the beginning of this video, especially at my age and I have friends that are single and I know a lot of people that are on dating sites now and you know talking to people and are just looking for love just good people that are hoping to find somebody to go through life with and this it's just sad man it just sucks so 
Y'all let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Other than that, I love you guys. Thank y'all again for being here. I hope y'all have a wonderful weekend. I hope y'all get outside, go to a fall festival, go for a walk, go do something. Okay, get outside. I love y'all and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.